What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are finally mounting up the CD009 transmission for our K24 Swap Subaru BRZ and we're also getting our custom aluminum drive shaft put in. Stick around, let's do it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is actually go pick up the drive shaft because it's currently sitting at Driveline Services of North Atlanta. All right, and here we go. This thing is looking very nice. It's got the input, the uh, slip yoke, for the 350Z transmission, the CD009, and it's got the right flange all the way down at the end to match my BRZ differential. Thing looks sick, let's get back to the house. All right, so now back at the house, I can give you guys a little bit better look at this here drive shaft. Now for the specs on this thing, I actually don't want to give you guys the exact length that I ordered because of the fact that if you go based off of just my recommendation, your swap could be slightly different depending on which engine mount you use and all that kind of stuff. Um, I definitely recommend measuring this guy for yourself. Um, and I can actually show you how to measure and what exact uh, dimensions you need to give a shop to get them to make you a custom drive shaft. So this guy, the slip yoke here at the end, which moves in both directions or really all directions so it can account for you know play in the you know in the drive line essentially this guy has what is called a 30 32 spline so it is a 30 spline with two skips and you can actually see those skips one here and one there so it's considered 30 slash 32 or a 30 with two skips slip yoke spline and then this guy is this is the um the end that will go on to my differential flange um this i will give you the measurements for because if you're using a subaru brz diff it should be pretty much all the same so i don't know the measurements for this right off the top of my head but i'll put a picture right here on screen so you guys can get those measurements if you need them now this guy i have measured it and sort of test fit it in place. Obviously I haven't installed it yet, but um, this guy should be pretty much just drop in, good to go. The transmission mounts, however, are not such a simple story. So when I started this swap project, I kind of started it before there were not really too many options for a CD009 transmission mount for this particular swap. Siki makes one for an LS to CD009 swap in this chassis. Um, at the time when I was looking, and this is well over a year ago at this point, the only company that I could find that made one was Toge Factory or TF Works. And so my thought process was, okay, they have a full engine mount, trans mount, oil pan, kind of a setup swap kit for the K-Swap CD009 into a BRZ FRS package. So, you know, certainly they did their, uh, you know, they did their due diligence, they did their R&D, and it should be, you know, especially with engine swap stuff, you never, you shouldn't ever really expect things to fit up perfectly because there's so many different variables that go into something like this. They do now have a second version out which if you go look that one up and you compare it to the one that I have, you'll see that they're different, but I'm kind of stuck with this one at the moment. So let's jump under the car and let me show you kind of what I'm working with. Here is the Toge Factory transmission mount. Uh, you can see that I don't really have them bolted in here. They're just sort of held in by friction. But if I lined up these holes and I put this mounting plate parallel with the surface that it needs to mount to, i.e. the transmission tunnel, you can see that that is not close. There's at least, there's probably close to an inch worth of gap 
on this side, which is the driver's side. And over here on the passenger side, there's even more. Like that's not even fully lined up and I can slide my whole hand in back here. So because of the fact that Toge Factory doesn't have installation instructions on this, it's really ambiguous as to how this is supposed to mount. Is it supposed to go this way and these come up and you know, you drill your holes and you just, you know, have some long bolts and you just use the long bolts to uh, pull this sheet metal outward until it, you know, fits up to this surface? Is this transmission mount bracket supposed to go upside down from how it is now and sort of come down and cradle the transmission from underneath? Well, I had a very similar thought and I also have heard from some of the people in the Facebook groups and the forums and all that that if you have a transmission mount like this style, this sort of upside down U-shaped style, if you want to use your stock exhaust or an aftermarket exhaust that it's intended for, you know, a standard BRZ FRS 86, this guy is going to be getting in the way of that because the stock exhaust comes right through this location from the front of the engine coming backwards towards the, you know, the differential and your big muffler near the back. And so I had the thought, well, let me see if I can't this take this guy and flip it upside down. If you do happen to pick up this transmission mount, you will probably notice how um, this is basically off center from the overall sort of center line of the flat piece of this bracket, how these mounting arms are shifted over all the way up to this edge and there's a space over here and it's the same deal with the other side. That's a, a much better angle perspective there. So if you're going to use this, make sure that this extra ledge piece is facing towards the back side of the engine because of the fact that you have two standard bolt hole mounts here. But even though we're not using those, if you, whatever shifter you're using is going to be using bolt mount locations here. So if you have this to where this extra space is facing the front of the car, not the back of the car, you're going to get interference with these bolts here. So make sure that the extra space or basically the corners are towards the back of the car, towards the differential, and that basically just moves these locations slightly forward just enough to clear both of your bolts there. And so now you can basically see how this, you know, clears both of these bolts here, comes down, cradles, sort of basically comes right underneath the bottom, and it's almost as if they designed it like this, which would make a lot of sense especially considering the fact that this is offset slightly to clear these two bolts. But there's no information anywhere that I can find that tells you that this is how you're supposed to do this. <laughs> so I'm really just sort of working off of my best guess. So if we take our mounting plates here that go into these bolts and we try to put them back in, you will find that these do not line up and there's not enough space to uh, get them to squeeze out. I'll get the passenger side one over here. I'll show you it's basically same deal on this side for some reason these uh, rubber washer spacer deals are a little bit tighter over here on the passenger side but more or less you can see that those bolt holes are not really lining up quite right that one is this passenger side is definitely a bit closer than the one on the driver's side but with this setup using it upside down like this you're not going to have any issues with your stock exhaust clearing underneath the car. So I don't know this for a fact. I'm obviously not in this step yet, but from what I can tell, you should, should um, be able to run any aftermarket standard BRZ sort of cat back exhaust. Now, obviously, we've got one big problem. These don't fit, but this is a much better solution than if we were to run it the other way because of the fact that we won't have to worry about making a custom exhaust, we can just run it like this. However, that means we need to clear some space here. And that means that we need to go back to hammering or air hammering or something. Basically, this whole surface of this transmission tunnel needs to get wider on both sides. 
And that means the engine's gotta come out. Yay. But before I take the engine out, I do want to try and create some marks on, you know, what, how much area do I need to basically hammer back and how far does it need to go? Things like that. Basically trying to take some markings to make sure that we're clearing. I'm gonna obviously try to do this in one shot and not have to, you know, just take it out, put it back in a whole bunch of times, but yeah, sometimes that's the name of the game. But I'm gonna do my best to try and make sure that I can get this done in one go. Let's do that and then we'll get to pulling the engine. Now that the engine's out, we can jump down underneath and get back to hammering. This was my least favorite part of this swap up until this point, so <sighs> yeah. What we've got here is I have basically when the transmission was in place, really the engine and the trans were in place, I taped off the outside of where the mounting brackets or the mounting plates go. So pretty much everything inside of this box on this side and that side both need to be widened out. So without further ado, let's get to hammering. All right, well, that's enough screwing around with this. It's time to break out the big boy. Let's go. So if you recall when um, we had to remove this whole big brace for the original stock transmission mount, um, we had to drill out all these spot welds and so it left all of these little nubs basically. And there were a couple of those that were in my way here so just got a 60 grit flat disc on the uh, edge grinder. Got those three over there and might be a little dark but these two right here, that's basically the only ones that are in the way for uh, what I need to do. So got that done, back to hammering most likely. So it's been a little while, we've made actually kind of a lot of progress, mostly thanks to my buddy Dan. Dan here um, drives his BMW M3, right? 335. 335 um, at Atlanta Motorsports Park all the time. So uh, I asked Dan if he could come over, help me out with this whole trans mount thing. And um, it's actually a bit more simple than I had originally thought. Like I think I've kind of been overworking compared to like the solution that we came up with. You guys had seen me hammering as well as using my air hammer all inside the tunnel on both sides. I used some tape here pretty much just to sort of mark off where these brackets go in place up here at the top. And uh, I used the old uh, scissor lift jack in here to try and squeeze it out a bit, but because this metal is so springy, it wasn't really wanting to hold the shape that I was trying to push it out to. So when Dan got here, he basically suggested, well, let's just put the engine and trans back in and see if we can't mount up your whole trans mount and just squeeze it up in there because I have actually widened this out a good bit. Um, I just didn't think that up to this point I had done enough of it. But uh, yeah, once we slipped the engine and trans back in place, we were able to get that trans mount with the hardware, with the brackets on each side, slid all the way up into place. And at that point, like we knew that it was gonna have to be out so we can drill the holes for these to mount up. And so what we did was we basically just marked off the outside of these brackets all the way around so that we could take that out, hold the brackets up here, and then take our marks for the holes that we need to drill. And now at this point, if I can get a decent angle here, there's kind of a lot of circles here, but this is the pilot hole that we drilled. There's your second one, and there's your third one. This guy is from uh, drilling out the spot weld, so that's that ain't it. But yeah, so one, two, three. But now we are, well really Dan is doing all the hard work. Dan's doing all the hard work here. He's actually just, Pulling my entire interior apart. Say hey Dan. Yeah, yeah, I just took driver's seat out. Okay. And we're gonna 
you know, I pulled some trim back so we can pull the carpet back and drill through where we got better access with the larger, longer drill bit. Yep, that's right. And we're gonna have to have this carpet out whenever we go to put the backing plate in here and actually screw in the opposite end of our hardware, we're gonna have to have the carpet out of the way. The passenger door's locked too. Ah, yes. <laughs> no, uh, no battery. We get this thing all pulled apart. Dan's gonna hit us with some drilling those holes through. There you go, that's one. This is the one that had two layers. Yep. And there's like this weird bubble of seam sealer and another panel on this side. action shot majestic hair in front of the light oh, that's, come on, man. that's beautiful oh god the internet deserves to see that right. <laughs> thank you dad we can, you know what i can't believe we didn't move any of that <laughs> since you've been having to get back there ain't that bad i did fold your mirror in though just now after my 47th trip past it <laughs> Uh, you know what we're gonna do? Oh, f I need the sh out of that door. Well, we got it done. The transmission mount, at least. Um, there's still a lot of stuff just to sort of finish cleaning up, especially the interior. Carpet is still out. Um, gotta put both of the seats back in. They're both sitting right here. But, uh, yeah, Dan had to head home. His wife was uh, getting on him about being being out for too long but i'll go into the car real quick show you guys what it looks like and um tomorrow we'll come back get everything on the interior button back up and uh, we'll get the drive shaft in but let me show you what it looks like down under here it's mounted underneath it's cradling everything's holding very well we've got three bolts in this side that go through to the interior and the same over here if it wants to focus yeah three bolts here that go into the interior so so glad that that's done. It's obviously, you know, not being supported by the uh, by the jack anymore. So that's awesome. I am totally gassed. <laughs> uh, my elbows and shoulders are killing me from the last couple of days with all of the hammering and the air hammering and the you know just all of the work under the car. Also, my neck is killing me from holding my neck up, looking at all of this stuff. This has not been an easy job this has been quite a pain all of this stuff under the car from widening the tunnel to mounting this transmission mount all of that stuff this is like the worst section of this engine swab everything else it has not in terms of like what's labor intensive everything else has been you know fine you know not too bad but this this has been tough so we still need to get drive shaft mounted up. We still need to get all of the interior stuff cleaned up, but today was a huge win. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna call it a night. I'm gonna get showered up and we'll see you guys tomorrow. And we're back. So I know we kind of rushed through a lot of stuff without really saying a whole lot or really explaining or going into detail on what we were doing, how we were doing it. So I wanna jump into the car a little bit and talk about sort of what we need to do on the interior and how we did all of what we did, just to give you guys a little bit more explanation as yesterday we were just trying to kind of get it done. Here is what it still looks like. It's, it's very much a mess. Um, so what you've got are two layers, right? You have your main carpet layer, obvious, but under here you also have this solid, uh, or not really solid, but flexible uh, sound deadening material sort of sound in for insulation for normal road car things if you guys are stripping your cars for track builds obviously none of this is really all of that concerning but we ended up taking the seats out completely which I don't think you really need to do 
you probably don't have to remove your seats because of the fact that we thought we were gonna have to pull the carpet all the way back like this because of how it's sort of connected in the middle here and in the middle back here, we didn't think we were gonna be able to pull the carpet from the front, but that is pretty much exactly what we were able to do. Here on the driver side, and I believe this is pretty similar to the passenger side, you've got a pin right here that has a clip on it, a little black, uh, black plastic clip that actually uh, threads on. So this rotates you know, counterclockwise just like any other bolt would. But then there's also this little sort of foot shield here, which goes all the way back up here by the driver's seat. And so whoops, you've got, right? Yeah, like that number. So you've got that clip up there, which obviously is sort of hidden. I'll get that sorted out. And then you've got this large kind of black plug. This guy, this is pretty substantial. This goes in this large hole right here and also threads on, threads off. You know, you tighten it down, you screw it in just like that. So this black clip right there, this loop in the carpet actually went around that. So we basically just pulled it, you know, the carpet deforms a little bit without tearing, pulls out from behind that small plastic clip and then we have the one that you unscrew here and then you have that larger plug that you unscrew there and that's pretty much it once you do that um, there is another plug back here that you can uh, unscrew as well uh, if you want to but we actually didn't have to so basically once you pull that carpet layer down you just take this sound deadening material layer and lift that up so that you can actually drill the holes in through that material and the way we did the mounting hardware is actually with the bolts sticking through on the underside of the transmission. That way, if there's any additional length on the bolt that's not like covered by the nut, is basically just behind all of this padded, you know, sound deadening material, instead of if we did the bolts sticking through the interior into the underside of the tunnel, you might have extra material of that bolt sticking out, sort of getting in the way of the transmission. I think that pretty much covers all of the interior stuff um i think we talked about just about everything on the underside of the car now that the transmission's in pretty much just need to bolt up the drive shaft i do need to kind of scrub off the flange on my differential it's a little bit rusty it's an old car what are you gonna do um well it's not even really that old it's a 2015. <laughs> um it's got a little surface rust on it. We'll get it off with like a red scotch brite or something. I might just leave the seats out instead of putting them back in because, well, I guess I shouldn't talk about that. Um, yeah, let's do differential and drive shaft. And that is the flange that the drive shaft is going to be mounting onto. As you can see, it's a little, uh, a little rusty, a little crusty. So what we're gonna do, I've got a red scotch brite wheel here on the end of my drill and uh, we're just gonna touch it up with that. If that doesn't work, I might uh, get some, might spray some WD-40 or some uh, PB Blaster or something like that onto it just to uh, help try to break up some of that surface rust. I'm sure at some point you guys have noticed this plug or I'm, at some point I'm sure I've mentioned it, but this plug is here so that my uh, gear oil that I've already pre-filled my transmission with doesn't uh, come spilling out while the engine is tipped at an angle while we're trying to like, you know, feed it in and all that. So the, whoop, see if we can get this up here. The input shaft right here, the yoke that this guy is called, um, this input shaft obviously needs to go right where that is. So I might have to do this kind of, kind of quick in terms of uh, pulling that plug out and getting this guy put in. So. I don't know if you guys even really have a great angle. Not really, but you get the gist. So yeah, because of you know how like this thing is uh, cut to a very specific length, it was you know basically measured from here on the transmission all the way back to the diff, and so I can't bolt it up to the diff and then try to slide this in afterwards. I have to get this end in, slipped in because it's a slip yoke and then try to get this end of the drive shaft bolted up into the differential. This 
slides right in there nice and nice. Oh baby, look at the, look at the fit back here. Oh my goodness. That is just about perfect. Let me make sure my differential bolts are gonna line up. I'm gonna try and get you guys a uh, decent shot here, but there's one, if I can get my headlight, yep, yeah, one, two bolts there on the, more so the driver's side. One, two, three, and then four is all the way up here. So, with that done, we can get a pretty decent shot. You got the trans mounted up right here. Drive shaft is in. Everything looks good, so whew, that is a big thumbs up for job well done. That was a task and a half. We did uh, we did lose some oil here, right at the exit, but really not too much. While we were kind of finagling around with getting the drive shaft put in, really awesome stellar work. Sheesh, it, it's in there now. <laughs> if if for whatever reason this engine needs to come back out of here. <sighs> oh, believe me, I do not want to take this thing out at all, period, at this point. Just knowing how much work it took to get the transmission mount in. The drive shaft was easy. Honestly, the drive shaft was super easy. Just get that slip yoke in there. A little difficult to get those four bolts, you know, from the back of the drive shaft to the differential, but really no big deal. That's gonna wrap it up for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date on the builds and all the new content. And until next time, build your dreams. All right, well, I'm, I'm gonna turn on my YouTube voice now, so don't be alarmed. Oh, Alan. Fuck off, guy. Alan! He's trying to rope me into a pyramid scheme. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you all about it. Let me, let me get down in here in the ducks.